Hi guys, welcome back to another one of my videos. If you're new here, my name is Holly and thank you so, so much for watching. Before we get into this one, I just wanted to quickly say I'm sorry that the audio is not up to the standard of the last few videos. My microphone has decided to start picking up the local radio station. So whenever I record with this on, there's literally radio station noise on my videos as well, which obviously would probably be a lot more annoying than just some bad audio. Anyways, I'm rambling. I just wanted to quickly say also before I get into this video that I do discuss topics of mental illnesses and if that is something that you are sensitive to then I would advise you probably not to watch this video. I have a lot of other videos on my channel that don't sort of discuss these topics so you're welcome to watch those ones. But with that out of the way, let's get into this video. So Giuseppe Joe Cinque was born on June 11th of 1971 to his parents Maria and Nino Cinque. They were actually Italian immigrants who had come out here a little bit before he was born and they decided to settle in Newcastle which is about two hours north of Sydney. Four years after Giuseppe, who everyone called Joe, was born, the family was so excited Decided to welcome a, another little boy who they called D'Anthony and Maria and Nino absolutely loved their little family and they just did everything they could to provide a great life for these boys full of opportunity. Joe played a lot of sport growing up and he did really well in school also. He was very much liked by everyone. He was someone who always wanted to make the people around him happy and so I suppose because of that he just had a lot of friends. He wasn't someone who liked conflict or anything like that like he was just always happy and smiling and whatnot And so I suppose people were attracted to his personality He was a natural carer also when he was only eight years old His mum actually got involved in a really bad car crash Which meant that she was left with a lifelong foot injury An eight-year-old Joe took the initiative to just help around the house and help look after his little brother and I just thought it was really important to include this because it shows the type of loving caring person that he was. He didn't date in school because he was so focused on other things but again this was his choice and he was happy with it. His parents were so happy when Joe graduated high school and he chose to go on to uni and study chemical engineering which he did and then he got himself a job at a local engineering firm but before he got the job he actually took a gap year when he finished uni and he traveled all around America and Europe. He went to Greece and Italy as well and he spent a lot of time there with his extended family and whatnot and he just he loved it. A nice little side note about his work though was actually that his father and grandfather worked for the same company and so I suppose it would have just been like such a nice little family dynamic all of them working there. One night in Newcastle in 1990 95, Joe decided to go out to a place called the brewery. He went out with his friends and this wasn't uncommon. He went out with his friends a lot but what was not as common was that on this night he actually came across a lady who he thought was so beautiful and he soon came to realize or came to learn I should say that her name was Anu Singh. Joe thought she was beautiful and so they started talking. She thought he he was attractive also and he came to learn that she was actually in Newcastle on holidays. She was visiting some of her family because it was the Christmas time and she was actually from Canberra. But the two of them felt like they had a connection instantly. They just felt like they had a lot in common. Canberra at the time was about five hours away from Newcastle. I think it's a little less now because back then in 1995 there wasn't a main road connecting the two directly which there is now but this didn't stop these two from starting a long distance relationship but let's talk a little bit about Anu. Anu Singh was born in India to her parents Patty and Surinda Singh. She was born on September the 3rd 1972 and I believe she had a few older brothers too but I could not find any information about them at all. 
so I'm not too sure. But the family, when Anu was about one years old, relocated to a little town in Sydney called Strathfield. Strathfield is part of Sydney's inner west and it's about 30 minutes from Sydney CBD. It's quite a multicultural suburb and nowadays it's pretty expensive to live there. But Anu's parents were both doctors and she actually took after them a lot in the smarts department. She attended attended a Catholic high school when she was in high school in Newcastle and in year 10 which was in 1988 she was actually ducks of her year which basically means she was the one who scored the highest like overall grade of all her grades combined so she must have been really really smart and in 1990 when she graduated she decided that she wanted to do a double degree she was going to study economics and law and she did this in Canberra at the Australian National University. Now Anu was someone who was very close with her family so because of the fact that she moved to Canberra it meant that she really missed them quite a lot because Canberra is about three hours from Strathfield and so yeah Anu missed them quite a lot it was said that she phoned home to them very often and it's believed that at this time she actually started partaking in recreational drugs as well and she actually ended up moving back home for a about a year because she just missed her family so much but by 1995 when she met Jo she was back in Canberra and studying her degree now in early Early 1995, before Anu had met Joe, Anu was actually in a relationship with another man by the name of Simon Walsh. I read on one article and so I can't say it's true for sure, but on one article it actually said that she was still in a relationship with Simon when she met Joe, uh, but I'm not entirely sure about that. The timeline between when she sort of broke up with Simon and when she met Joe is quite blurry, but yeah. Yes, I did read that in one article. But either way, according to her father, Patty, it was around this time when Anu started to suffer more from her mental illnesses. And she also started to use recreational drugs more heavily. And she also experienced quite a bit of insomnia. So I'm sure all of that together probably wasn't creating the best mix. As Anu and Joe's relationship started to develop more and more, Anu was focusing more and more on her weight. She would exercise all the time, she would constantly watch what she ate and she would also weigh herself. And Anu had always been someone who took pride in her appearance and to her that was keeping herself very slim, that was something that was important to her and so she was always someone who watched what she weighed and presented herself in a very nice clean proper way but this was just like taking it to a whole nother level everyone around her was starting to notice that she was really it, it was really starting to become a negative thing rather than a positive thing it was just very clear that she was becoming mentally unwell and it seemed like she really hadn't moved on from her ex Simon at all and interestingly enough it's actually because of something Maria and Nino's godson Robert said that made me sort of realize this. He basically said one time he was at a dinner party at the Cinque's household and this was the first time he was meeting Anu and he said that his first impression of her was just that she was quite strange. He said that she talked about the afterlife and wanted to know everyone's opinions on the matter and she also talked about her ex Simon telling everyone how in Hence, their relationship used to be, describing it as almost incestuous. And apparently the family was quite surprised by this comment, understandably. And Robert said that he remembers, he could tell that Joe was very, very uncomfortable, but he didn't really say anything at the time. And I can imagine why. I mean, I don't know what you would say to a comment like that. It is just very awkward. Joe's parents said though that they noticed a change in him after he started dating. Anu. They said that he almost took a back seat to her. She was someone that was very loud and outgoing and Joe was too but it just seemed like she was the one that was always calling the shots and making the decisions and I think that this sort of concerned 
Joe's parents a little bit because they felt like their son was changing for someone else. Joe's mom said that every night she would have dinner on the table for her family at 6 p.m. And something that frustrated her was that every night Anu would insist on calling Joe at about 10 past 6 p.m. Maria said that she would ask Anu to call Joe at 7 because she really just wanted her family to sit and eat together and she didn't mind if they talked the whole rest of the night but she just wanted to have that hour with him but this sort of just seemed to fall on deaf ears because Anu just continued to call him at around 10 past 6 every night and I think it was the small things like this that just started to rub Maria and Nino the wrong way. Anu like I mentioned before wasn't very very well. She always felt like she was sick and Joe, who had always been a very hardworking, committed worker, was starting to leave work halfway through the week and fly down and see her and the thing was that this was starting to become more and more constant and it was only because he cared about her. He was a natural carer and she believed that she was unwell and so he would go down there all the time but it just started to affect his family dynamic a little bit I think and I think it just worried his parents because they could tell that his career was starting to take a back seat to someone else. The relationship between Anu and Joe continued into 1996 and by this point Joe had actually quit his job in Newcastle and he'd gotten a new job in Canberra so that he could go and live with his girlfriend. They lived together in a suburb called Downer in Canberra in a little townhouse. And like I said, Joe had gotten himself a new job. Anu was still studying at university, but due to her declining mental health, she was starting to attend her uni less and less. Her peers actually noticed that the once well-dressed, confident Anu was now a shell of the person that she used to be. On the days that she would attend, she would appear disheveled and disinterested in her studies. Anu also was somewhat of a storyteller. It's not clear if she told stories for attention or because she actually believed them, but she would say things to people at her uni like she was convinced that her muscles were wasting away due to the fact that she believed something was wrong with her metabolism. So often she would come into uni with a new self-diagnosis or even other things. It didn't really have to be that specifically. Sometimes she would make up stories about other things but her peers didn't really take her seriously because so often she would come in and say things that turned out not to be true. And this is so sad for a few reasons. Firstly, because she was obviously really going through something to be making claims, false claims all the time to people at her uni. And secondly, when she did start making claims that would turn out to be true in the future, no one believed her. Anu didn't really have many close friends, but there was one in particular that supported her a lot throughout these times, and that was a lady by the name of Madhavi Rayo. And I will talk a little bit more about our friend Madhavi in a little bit. But Joe was also a huge support for Anu. He knew that she was really struggling with her image and whatnot and he would try everything he could to reassure her that she was beautiful and that he loved her and I can imagine it would have been a really hard time for the couple. Anu was obsessed with losing weight and Joe knew this because she would comment on it all the time. One night according to Anu, Joe actually mentioned that she should try and take a drug by the name of Ipecac. Ipecac is a small shrub. It grows in parts of Central America and Brazil. The root is used to make medicine and it's most commonly used after suspected poisoning as it causes vomiting. Anu said later that Joe actually knew about this drug because apparently at the time models would take it to keep themselves slim. I don't really want to talk too much about this drug because I don't want anyone to feel like it's a good thing to use if you are struggling with binging because I can tell you now binging is not a healthy way to lose weight. There is so much research on this topic that I would encourage you to do if you feel like what I'm saying isn't true. But Anu did start taking this drug. Around the same time she also started to believe that she had bugs crawling all over her body and that she was suffering from a terminal illness that had been brought on by the fact that she was taking this Ipecac. And because
because in her mind, Joe was the one that suggested she start taking this Ipecac. It was his fault that she had this terminal illness. She felt like he was the one that should be held responsible. And so she was really angry about it. And I want to make it clear that this terminal illness wasn't real. This was made up in her head, but because she believed it was real and she believed it came from this drug, she believed that Joe was the root of the issue. By mid-1997, Anu had actually convinced herself that she had AIDS. And she told a friend that she thought it was really unfair that she had AIDS and Joe didn't. And she actually said to this friend that she wanted to put blood on Joe's toothbrush so that he got AIDS too. Thankfully, when she got a Test, it came back negative and so Anu actually didn't have AIDS but this didn't stop her feelings of anger towards Joe. Anu's parents actually knew that she wasn't doing well and had really encouraged her to seek psychological help but she was very headstrong and refused to see anyone because she felt like all of her issues were physical and I guess from this we can assume that she really didn't understand at this point at least that she was living with a mental illness. Fast forward to May of 1997 and Arnie was actually talking to a friend again about how much she hated Joe. She said that she hated him so much that she wanted to kill him. She also said she wanted to kill her ex Simon and all the doctors that she had seen because she believed they were incompetent due to the fact that they were diagnosing her with psychological issues that she thought were physical. A few weeks after this, Anu and her friend Madhavi took themselves to the Canberra library where they started researching assisted suicide and other related topics. We have to remember this was 1997 and so there was no easy way to access the internet and so libraries were the way to go if people wanted information on anything. The two of them apparently while they were there photocopied a lot of information out of the books that they were using and I suppose you guys are probably wondering why Madhavi went along with Anu to do this research and it really just came down to the fact that Anu had a very dominant personality and Madhavi was very submissive. Anu would say jump and Madhavi would say how high. Anu herself by this point was showing a lot of signs that would indicate that she was suicidal. She actually asked another friend to go and get her a gun. That friend thought she was joking and obviously didn't get her one. She told another friend that she wanted to die but she didn't have a gun and that wonderful supportive friend suggested that she overdose on heroin instead because this would mean that she was more likely to have a pain-free death. She was also getting rid of a lot of her belongings and her parents knew about this and were really worried. They actually tried to get her hospitalized against her will but unfortunately these things take a long time and something a lot lot worse would happen before they managed to get her into a hospital. Anu managed to obtain heroin and a friend showed her and Madhavi how to shoot up. And this was so that Anu could end her own life. Madhavi was just there either because she wanted to get into heroin or she wanted to support her friend in ending her own life. I'm really not sure which one but either way she was there. Anu actually went back to the dealer that she'd bought the heroin from and she bought another amount which the dealer knew equaled enough to have two people overdose. And so he asked her why she needed that much because he was aware that she was suicidal. And apparently she replied by saying, someone is coming with me. So we know at this point that Anu is scheming a plan to end her own life, but on top of that, she is also creating a plan to end Joe's as well. It's not entirely clear as to why she wanted to end Joe's life. We know she was angry at him about the Ipecac, but there were other theories. I mean, maybe she felt like he wouldn't be able to survive if she was gone, or maybe the thought of him moving on with someone else was something that she didn't want to deal with. Who really knows, but let me explain how this all went down. On Monday, October 20th, 1997, Anu decided to host a dinner party. It wasn't out of the ordinary for the couple to host these sort of parties because they were both social people who enjoyed having their friends over. The thing was by this point multiple people actually knew about the fact that Anu wanted Joe dead because I suppose they just would have talked amongst 
themselves after Anu made those claims. And this meant that people attending the dinner party actually knew what she wanted to do with Joe and also knew that she wanted to end her own life. And it's kind of astounding to me. To be fair, they didn't think she would pull through because, as I mentioned previously, at times she would make up things that didn't turn out to be true. And so I suppose her friends just thought that that was this, what this situation was. But in saying that, not one of these people contacted the police. Instead, they all came along to attend this dinner party to see what would happen that night. Anu actually didn't make any moves that night at the dinner party, but once all the guests had gone, she gave Joe a cup of coffee which had sedatives in it. Once he was passed out, Anu attempted to inject him with heroin, but she actually failed because the heroin was so concentrated that it became congealed. And so Joe woke up the next morning none the wiser about what had happened that that night and he went to work. Anu wasn't giving up that easily though and a few days later on October the 24th which was a Friday Anu actually decided to have another impromptu dinner party. Joe wasn't aware of this dinner party taking place but he was happy to attend. He spoke to the guests about the new car that he had just bought which he was so excited about and the guests reported that the couple was happy and appeared to be in love. Like last time the people who attended knew that that Anu had intentions to hurt Joe and end her own life. But again, they really didn't think that she would pull through. This dinner party went into the early hours of Saturday morning when everyone left besides Madhavi. It was then that Anu sedated Joe, this time with a much stronger sedative, which is called Rehypnol. She used 10 tablets of this and then again tried to inject him with heroin. She was unsuccessful with the heroin and Madhavi actually ended up leaving around 6 a.m. When Madhavi got home, she was speaking to a friend about the fact that Anu had actually tried to go through with her plan and this friend strongly advised her to have nothing to do with any of this. And Madhavi agreed. I guess at this point she probably realized that this was all really real and actually happening. And so from this point on, she tried to not be involved one of Anu's friends actually did threaten to contact the police also at this point, but Anu managed to convince them that she was only sedating Joe so that she could end her own life without him being awake for it. And I don't know why that in itself wasn't enough for the friend to contact the police, uh, but anyways... The following night, so Saturday night, Anu actually called one of the friends who had attended the party. She wanted to ask him if the fact that Joe had had 10 tablets of Rehypnol would do any long-term damage to his body. And this friend assured her that it wouldn't do any long-term damage. Apparently after this, according to the friend, Joe actually took the phone and he said that he was fine and that Anu was overreacting and he he felt like he was completely fine mentally, but his body just wanted to sleep like crazy. It's my assumption that at that point in time, he must have sort of been going in and out of consciousness because two hours later, Anu actually called another friend to ask if you can inject heroin into the backs of your arms and legs. And these calls were really important because they came quite relevant in court later on. But anyways, back to the story. Joe was barely alive by Saturday night. He was sleeping a lot, vomiting, and by Sunday morning his lips were actually going blue. Anu called a friend in a panic as she was aware that by this point he was very close to death. And that friend told her that she had to call the ambulance. Anu didn't want to, but that friend reasoned that if she didn't, she was going to be facing a murder charge. And I guess this was enough to get her to call the ambulance. So Sunday is when Anu called the police, but it definitely didn't go as smoothly as planned. Firstly, she gave them the wrong address. She said that they lived at 30 Antle Street, but they actually lived at 79. She also said her name was Olivia, which interestingly was actually the name 
of someone who attended some of the dinner parties and so I don't know if that was on purpose that she said that name or not but it was interesting that that's the name that she gave to the person on the phone. The dispatcher also asked her to try and resuscitate Joe, but Arnie just said that she didn't really know what she was meant to be doing and that his mouth wouldn't open properly and then there was stuff in his mouth. The ambulance station was actually only three minutes away from where her and Joe lived, but because of all of this back and forth on the phone and the fact that she gave the wrong address initially, it meant that the ambulance took a lot longer than that to get there. Police could tell that her behavior was a bit strange from the moment that they walked into the townhouse. Anu would be distressed and crying one minute but then talking calmly the next and although she was crying police officers noticed that she wasn't really producing any tears which is really interesting. It definitely reminds me of the Kaisha Whippard case with the mum Christy. Sadly though on Sunday afternoon the 26th of October 1997 Joe Chinque would take his last breath. Anu was actually arrested straight away because she told police at the scene that she had injected him with heroin as a murder suicide plot and a few days later Madavi Rayo was also arrested and charged with conspiracy to commit murder. What I find so interesting about this case is the fact that at no point was there really an indicator that Anu was going to inject herself even though she said that's what her intentions were. I don't know I just find it interesting because to this day there's not really a solid motive as to why she did what she did. The only other piece of information that came out of the trial and whatnot was that the family, Joe's family, in particular Maria and Nino's godson Robert, knew that Joe was planning on leaving Anu. They actually found in court that when they were looking at his diary, there was a day marked off in there and it was indicated that this was going to be the day that he moved back to Newcastle. And if you guys remember before, he had bought a new car not that long before as well. And Robert actually believes that that car was almost like his first sort of ticket to this new freedom. And to back up this theory, after Joe passed away and his family went to the townhouse, they actually realized that a lot of his stuff was missing. And it, I, to, to my knowledge, it hasn't been found, or at least I don't know where it, where it was, but there was definitely stuff that wasn't there, which would also indicate that maybe he was planning on moving. And that is basically the only theory that we have to go off. And to this day, Anu claims that she didn't know that Joe was going to leave her and she actually says that they were planning on getting married, but Joe's family definitely says different. But I'll talk a little bit about the trial. So in October of 1998, Madhavi and Anu were actually given a joint trial. They were initially going to be tried together, which I'm going to be honest with you guys. I didn't really know that this was a thing that happened. And I'm kind of embarrassed to admit that because I feel like I know quite a bit about true crime, but there you go. This trial was aborted though on November 11th of 1998. And it was basically because the judge believed there was a piece of evidence that was problematic as it was unclear as to whether this piece of evidence was targeted towards Anu or Madhavi. Before Anu's second trial, she actually did not have a jury. It was just before the judge. And this trial was in 1999, by the way. And all of that time before from when she committed the crime to 1999, she had been in jail. 
but like just in jail awaiting trial. But her defense was basically that because she was mentally ill, she had diminished responsibility. And of course the Crown tried to argue that she was very capable of making her own decisions and aware of her actions. But ultimately her defense actually won. And Anu Singh was found not guilty of murder due to diminished responsibility and she was found guilty of manslaughter instead and she was sentenced to 10 years in prison with a non-parole period of four years and i'm just going to tell you guys now she only ended up serving the four years for murder or manslaughter technically is what they said it was but how crazy is that all charges against Madhavi were actually dropped and she didn't have to stay in jail until her trial. She was released on bond because there just wasn't enough evidence to place her at the crime scene while Joe was being drugged by Anu. And apparently now she is married and living overseas. Anu was released on parole in October of 2001 and she actually ended up going back to prison three years later in 2004 because she breached her parole conditions by smoking marijuana but she got out a few months later and she's completed her masters in criminology at sydney university and she's written a thesis which i think can be accessed online on the causes of female crime including abuse mental illness and drug use she has a new boyfriend who is a former heroin addict and thief who she met in the remand center after her arrest I believe you also wrote her letters of support, which is kind of how they started talking. And as far as I know, she's just living her life somewhere in Sydney now. Joe's family, understandably, were absolutely devastated with the really short sentence that Anu received. They believe that her actions were premeditated and she should have been charged with murder. And this is such a heartbreaking case because Joe will never get to live to see another day but Anu was released from prison literally before she was 30. She was young enough to start her own life again, like get married, have kids. Joe never gets to do any of that and I can imagine that would be such a tough pill for the Chinque family to swallow. I can't even imagine how they would feel. But with that, I come to the end of this video. I've decided that from now on, I'm going to link below all the resources that I use just so that you guys know where I get my information from. People sometimes ask so now you shall receive. I also have my Instagram linked if you guys want to follow me on there then go for it. I insta story every now and then so if you want to see a little bit more of my personal life you're welcome to follow me on there. And as always I hope you guys are having a wonderful day wherever you are and hopefully I will see you in my next one. Bye, you guys.